thousands and thousands of farmers listen to the radio program. We want these farmers to plant the trees in order to regain the fertility of the land. Because this area of ours, we depend on agricultural produce. IUCN has been working with government and different partners to assess the restoration opportunities in the country. Uganda is one of the countries that signed up to the bond challenge to really promote restoration. We have set a target of restoring 2.5 million hectares of degraded and deforested land. Uganda's commitment to the bond challenge is a really a very ambitious commitment. It has been recognized as a major contributor to the bond challenge which is a goal to have under restoration 150 million hectares by 2020. About 90% of the population depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. And this project we are implementing is in the mountainous area of Elgon, and that is the eastern part of the country. And the project is basically focusing on enhancing the resilience of both the ecosystem, but also the communities that depend on this ecosystem for their livelihoods. Originally, we had thought that the district technical officers would be going to the individual farms to support them, to provide on-farm guidance. But later on, we discovered that it was not practically possible by the time they do a round to all the farmers, almost a year is gone. So we thought of a one-stop center. The demo site in Sanzara was established in order to train the communities on how to grow a variety of crops. There are interventions that help to control soil erosion. There's irrigation, mulching, and tree planting. So they learn as they work, and then they go and implement these interventions on their farm. As we continued implementing, we thought of now reaching out. We partnered with Farm Radio International and came up with a 24-week radio campaign the key messages were soil and water conservation, which tree species people want to plant, where, what are the benefits of the different practices and all that. This is really a pilot project for us. Can we reach to those farmers through these programs in a way that can help influence behavior change? We think the answer is yes. The Farm Radio project has actually helped us to address the communication gap with really scaling up and ensuring that the lessons from our projects benefit people beyond just where we are working. The radio program we broadcast twice a week. We invite guests live to the studio and interact with the farmers. Then we do a replay. So in a week, we broadcast twice in a week, two times. We have also introduced to a border border radio for other farmers who may not afford to buy a radio and also others who don't pick our signal very well. The border border rider goes to these communities. They have a particular day for converging and follow the program on the radio. So in the end, they also give their views or opinion which is recorded and taken back to the radio studios for the others to also hear their views and opinions. Knowledge is power. We have been able to provide a platform for people to share their lessons, to share their challenges, to have their questions answered by experts. Through those discussions and through the lessons, they've been empowered. We are trying to look at how we can also adopt these ICT technologies to use in our areas of work. We had the idea to develop a mobile phone application. 
the Visea map is a tool that can be used for planning agroforestry projects, restoration projects and forestry projects. Immediately by clicking on the map you'll get a list of all the suitable tree species according to the original vegetation. An extension agent can get a list of products and services that the species can provide. And that can then start a discussion of which species the community is interested in planting and taking care of. This map now becomes a ready tool to select what we call the right tree for the right place. The information that is going to be generated from this forest landscape restoration process is going to guide government in various sectors. The forestry sector, agriculture, energy and biodiversity conservation. And if we are successful in demonstrating the benefits of radio program to farmers, we would like to scale this up in other countries like Brazil, Ethiopia, Rwanda, who have all made commitments to Bond Challenge. We see the enthusiasm of the people, the interest increasing day by day. People working together. This community now has been able to raise over 300,000 tree seedlings. We have had over 600,000 indigenous trees planted. I see a bright future. In the next five, ten years, people come and see how ecosystem-based adaptation approaches work, how forest landscape restoration interventions work, because we shall have all this knowledge put together, all these experiences, all this expertise.